welcome to your lab two tutorial, how to take a blood pressure. In this section, what you're going to be doing is the practical part. When you do your lab activities, it will take a little bit of the form of an instructional video, but less so. I want you to try to communicate to myself and your peers what you're hearing as you're going through it and the steps that you're being mindful of taking. So there's going to be some overlap of this video and your lab activity. But again, mine's going to be a little bit more on the practical side and how to execute this rather than you explaining to me and your peers what you're hearing while you're doing it. Okay. The other part that I want to mention before we get going is a lot of the uh, concepts behind what I'm hearing. I might just say some concepts like systolic, diastolic. If you're unfamiliar what those are, go back into your lab manual read the uh, pre-lab a bit more. Also, I go into a little bit more detail in the lecture, uh, video lectures portion of this. So go back, try to find that section and, and uh, refresh yourself with that, okay? okay? So again, just a quick familiarization with things. This is your stethoscope. As I mentioned before in the lecture, you wanna make sure that it's turned on um, and that the earpieces go forward into your ears rather than pointing back, okay? Um, typically, to start off, um, you want to try to learn the logistics of how to keep your hands free and or do a couple of different things at the same time with your hands. So you might notice a few things like um, leaving the stethoscope here or placing them in my ears beforehand. Uh, similarly, when I'm using the blood pressure cuff, you might notice that I have only one hand on the bulb and the, the valve. And that's really just so I can balance and manage all the different uh, pieces of equipment as I go through this. And you should try to do the same. Now your blood pressure cuffs will probably have something similar to this, where the, the, um, the valve uh, meter essentially has a little clip and a little spot on the cuff that you can place it. That's just a way to be able to manage the, the meter aspect of this. Um, occasionally, you know, when I'm doing this in, in class, typically I'll, I'll let your, your partner or volunteer hold on to the, the meter, but, um, you know, it's much easier to practice this, uh, with it on the cuff because when you're working with clients or patients, you're, you're not going to ask them to hold on to things. So, yeah. Um, again, as I mentioned in the lab, there's going to be markings and different indications on the cuff itself. Before you start taking someone's blood pressure, it's always good to just familiarize yourself with that. This one is actually kind of cool. It's got an arrow for the left and the right arm. Your lab manual is going to give more specific details on how it should be done for your lab activity. Uh, but here uh, I have my, my volunteer, Tully. She um, is resting her arm. Again, it's on, on a table. Uh, if you have a shelf or something or, or whatever, you can use that as well. You just want to make sure the person's arm is comfortable and not highly uh, high elevated uh, above their heart. Okay? So you want to keep it uh, heart level or even slightly below. Okay. Uh, the other thing before you start your activity, again, there's going to be more details there, is you're going to want to let your person, your volunteer, actually rest for a while. And uh, if, you, if you happen to dive right into it, just know that you're not going to get a true resting blood pressure, that it's going to be uh, potentially a little bit more elevated. And so if someone's borderline between being hypertensive, so above the blood pressure cutoff for exercise or not, you might want to retest and be thorough and make sure that you give them a long enough break. Okay. Um, right. So from here, uh, we can start getting ourselves ready and set up to apply. So again, I'm going to line this arrow up with her brachial artery. And again, if you want a good picture of where that is, check out the lecture portion. Um, the other thing I'm going to do, which is part of the activity you've done just before the blood pressure one, is find her, uh, Tully's radial pulse. Okay. So initially, again, just getting the cuff on. Some people it'll slide, some people it won't. Um, I like to keep the Velcro a little tidy. I'm going to fold this up just to try to keep it out of the way. And as long as it's holding, not dropping down to her forearm, the position is going to be okay. And one of the main reasons I don't want it dropping down to her forearm is again, I'm going to try to use a stethoscope drum to hear 
her brachial artery, and that's right, right uh, in her um, elbow uh, crease, essentially. And if the cuff slides down, it's going to block that. Okay. So again, more things to help set you up for success while you're doing this. When you go to pump up the bulb, um, again, notice which way is open and which way is closed. It's a little tricky sometimes uh, unless it's on someone and you start pumping and just try it. But you can sometimes see a little pinhole on the side of the valve. So you can check it out. And when you go to tighten it before you start pumping it up, you really don't want to get in there and crank it. Because ideally, once you start letting air out of the cuff, you just want to be able to flick it very, very lightly to open it up. And so, um, again, just having a small amount of air coming out of the valve with a little bit of a release of pressure is what you're after. If you really crank it on there, you're going to need both hands to reopen it. And typically what happens is you overshoot with how much air can come out of the blood pressure cuff. Okay. So, how are you doing? Feel yeah. relaxed? Good? Yeah. Okay, arm is comfortable, good position. Again, palm up is, is helpful. If you, uh, so if you're in a supine position with the hand, that's great. If you pronate it, what you'll find is it'll close off the elbow a little bit. So again, we're gonna supinate, open up there. Great, I'm feeling pretty ready right now. I got my bulb set up, the meter for the, the readings all set up. Cuff is in a good position, it's aligned with the brachial artery. And before I start taking Tully's radio pulse here, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna put my stethoscope in. That's one last thing I have to do when all the parts are moving, okay? So um, initially, again, people are gonna be very uh, uh, varied in how different their systolic and diastolic are. So one of the easiest ways to ensure that you're always gonna get someone's proper systolic to pump up to is you're going to get the the radio pulse so as soon as you uh, feel a lack of a radio pulse what you found again from the uh, the other tutorial and the and the lecture you'll know is essentially you've cut off all the blood flow from the brachial artery down to the forearm so as soon as I feel that I'm like ah the cuff is now at a greater pressure than Tully's heart can uh, pump I know I'm over systolic. I'm going to give it one more pump. So that's going to put it another 10 millimeters of mercury over what our systolic is. That's going to give me enough time to get my stethoscope in place, get ready to start letting the air out of the blood pressure cut. Okay, so find the radio pulse. And it's good to note the beat because that's the beat that you're going to be listening for after you let out air. So I'm feeling a beat, 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 beat. Good, okay. So now I'm ready, I'm going to start pumping. Good. And I notice the pulse is gone a little tiny bit more. And now this is going to give me a chance. I haven't opened anything yet to get up here. Get in place where the brachial artery is. And now I'm going to slowly let the air out at two millimeters of mercury per second. So just very, very slowly. There, and I started to hear my first beat. That coincided at 120 millimeters of mercury. Still hearing beats. Starting to get a little softer. And now it's gone. Okay, and I noted just when that last beat was. I'm immediately gonna let all the air out of the blood pressure cuff to ensure that circulation is getting back to Tully's hand and forearm. And uh, again, I'm going to look back and think, okay, well, I heard the last beat, it was between um, the, the hash mark uh, 70 and 60, it was just one below 70, so I'm going to say 68, okay? That was the last time I heard any bump, bump, bump beats coming through, okay? Or curve cough sounds, all right? So I can go and quickly make a little note, 120 over 68, great, okay? Um... How's the arm? Okay? Good. Great. Yeah. When you're practicing with your uh, volunteers, participants, peers, whomever, uh, again, if you're doing repeated measures, check in with whoever you're, you're working with and make sure that um, their, their arm isn't getting too sore. As you'll notice, if you get practice on, it can get pretty uh, sore and achy having the blood occluded from your forearm over and over and over. Okay? Great. So we got systolic and diastolic. 
Again, the first sound, or when you first start hearing the blood come through the cuff, and then the last sound that you hear, and um, yeah, how to use the bulb and the meter, and set up your, your participant. Okay, other than that, you should have notes again in the virtual tutorial, the online lecture, as well as this, and then follow through the procedures on your lab manual uh, as close as you can. And that should help you get uh, good results for your lab activity.